Hello everybody, my name is Austin Randolph. Uh, per usual, give me a subscribe if you're feeling generous, follow me on TikTok, same username as here, blah bitty bee bitty bah. But today we're talking about rosewood fretboards or palfaro or Indian laurel fretboards that look like this. And you're probably not taking care of them and well, you should be. So I've made a video on this guitar already, but I bought this brand new. Uh, maybe two months ago, something like that. Um, it's time to change the strings and the board's dry. So I'm gonna flip the camera around in a sec and we'll uh, we'll hopefully get a good before after of what a dry, you know, and it's the three types of woods. They're all kind of interchangeable. It's personal preference, what you prefer. But the reason that these kind of boards like a pretty brown cut of wood fretboard versus like a maple one you'd find on some Fender guitars. These are really porous cuts of wood. You'll see what I mean when I flip the camera around, but because it's a porous cut of wood, it dries out and it dries out quickly. So you need to oil it. Um, I use this, it's Music Nomad F1 Oil. I know some old timers like to use lemon oil or there are, it, it's not like you can just use cooking oil, obviously. There's certain oils that are healthy for a wood to, you know, take in as if it was in like a crazy tropical climate, which is what this kind of, you know, comes from. So I'm gonna show you guys a before and after. The absolute magic that a little bit of oil can do on your fretboard when it's dry. It's, I think I paid, I don't know, 15, $20 for this little two ounce bottle and it'll last me 10 years or whatever. So it just blows my mind when I see somebody playing a nice guitar with a rosewood board and it, the, the board looks dry and orange and it's, come on dude, with a tiny little bit of effort and a little bit of oil, it, oh, hopefully you guys see the before and afters and the difference like speaks for itself. And this is uh, most definitely not rocket science, but as far as like the how to, um, clean your fretboard off with, uh, like a really non abrasive cleaner. Like I use, if you have gunk on it, if it's fine, like this is a new guitar, I'm not going to clean it right now. Um, just something really natural and non abrasive. Like I use, uh, like a Myers multi-surface cleaner if I have a bunch of shit on my fretboard. But, uh, for today, all we're doing is we're dripping this on every other fret. We are... Budget's getting crazy for cleaning. We're using paper towel. Um, and then we're just wiping it around. We're giving it maybe, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes to soak into the wood. And then just wiping off the excess that's on your binding or if there's any like pooling up if you put too much on. But that's it. You're just giving the wood what it needs. So that's all I got for today, guys. Hopefully uh, you see like as a, a massive difference, which I think there is and I think it's well worth it. Um, and hopefully I've convinced some of you guys today to, uh, fix your nasty orange ass parts. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Talk to you soon. So, I'm just going to do a quick pan on the fretboard. So you can kind of see it's a really pretty cut of wood, but you can see how it's starting to get kind of an orangey hue. You can really kind of see Hopefully a big difference after it gets old. And this soaked that right up. That was dry. So you can see how there's still some orangey hues through it. But the general like orange tone and ashiness is gone. So yeah, I hope you guys can see a difference. I mean, it really just on a day-to-day -day looks so, so much better. And it's better to have a healthy, hydrated fretboard.